Hello, today, um, the chairman, thank you for inviting me to this meeting. And, um, I'm glad to be here in Madrid. It's a lovely city, and it took my wife in late summer, where we come from the north, where it's already winter. So, thank you very much. And at least I identified the speaker before. He's a fan of the uh, scaffold I'm using for carpet repair. The synthetic bilayer scaffold we are using. And these are the defects. Uh, these are these full thickness defects you have been seen already in the last uh, slides. And we have to take care of those. And obviously, we use all the different methods. Uh, uh, we have been using Macy for this uh, uh, defect for over 10 years now. <coughs> and we were uh, looking for another device uh, for the ideal treatment of cartilage repair. And in our greens that should be fast, simply, and handling fast recovery, easy to get, should be reasonable. Pricing is a very big topic in Germany. So it's a single procedure, should be inexpensive, and the success should go along. Reliable long-term results and sudden pain relief we would like to achieve. And does this plug, this two-fit plug, provide this? It's a multi-layer product. Each layer is designed to match physical and mechanical properties of the ejectant tissue and it's absorbable. You can see there's a subfrontal bone face, there's a tight mark in the face of Optimus carpets. The components are mainly porous, 75% is porous, and then we have a polylactin co um, co uh, polymer with calcium sulfate and polylactate fibers with surfactant. The work mechanism is a short Cool. The stem cells block, but it supports the healing. It should create a mechanical safe environment, and that's what we heard, have learned lessons in the last year. That will lead to high and light cartilage. We have to have a surgical method that press fit and shows close contact between the implant and the bone. And the first uh, structure of the implant is ideal for chondrocyte migration and bone migration. And the tissue transfer should slowly progress while increasing the workload. Here you see the absorbing principle of the plug. You see how the blood sucks into the plug, but it will stay with the plug. <coughs> and in different to microfracturing, you are not losing uh, the blood within the joint. That's why we are covering microfracture areas now with scaffold. <coughs> Cartilage, it's, uh, the, the bone plug is used for cartilage and osteochondral defects. We have different diameters, 5, 7, 9, and 11. The implant cylinder can be flushed with the ejectant cartilage. It might be a good advantage uh, comparing it to mosaic plastic. It's for primary defects or even to fill in the donor side following mosaic plastic. <coughs> we know if we don't treat defects, and this is a cheap model, you see, after six months, the hole stays a hole. And when we put in the true fit, you will see covering of the defect. And this will look even nicer after 12 months. You do see in the slides below how the regeneration in the histology slides uh, will show. We have made experience since November 2006. We have implanted 376 of those plugs. 57 patients were included in the most center study. We had no primary complications. We had five secondary procedures with an ACL, with a medium meniscus, and we switched three patients to a unit. <coughs> this is a trucoside preparation kit, which offers you the options of flat size. And then the question is mini open versus arthroscopic. It depends on the skill and on the usage your clinic, but I would uh, say uh, is used to mosaic plastic in an arthroscopic way, you <coughs> might just go on with the stupid plug in the arthroscopic way as well. Very important in the technique is the positioning and the proper placement, especially if you use the arthroscopic way. You have to have <coughs> the position to the defect. And we do this by putting down the needle before we do the penetration of the pocket. Here now you see the uh, the defect, this is a typical uh, focal lesion, fourth grade lesion, and the options are obviously microfracturing. It's too small, I think, for 
uh, may see it. So we have the options of putting in <coughs> Put in the drill sleeve. You don't have to clean up a lot. Make sure that the debris is gone on the, on the rim of the defect. And now we put in similar to a mosaic plastic, the drill sleeve. So you see the, the millimeters pointed out on the drill sleeve. And we process the drill sleeve, we slam it down to about 8 millimeters. We normally change that procedure if we have the treatment of osteochondrosis discounts. Now you put off the drill sleeve and we do see the defect. It's an osteochondral defect that stays now. We make sure that there's no debris in the hole. And finally, we fill up the hole with the plug. Before that, I do measure the depth of the plug to make sure that we have an even contribution and annulation of the plug. <coughs> Here now the plug is placed and it's flush with the surface, the surrounding surface, and this is the main reason to use this, because you can model it to the surrounding surface of the native cartridge. So the ideal patient in my Patient selection will be a patient with a solid uh, focal lesion, cartilage lesion, grade four, with a normal, uh, uh, a normal joint line and a normal joint space, medial joint space in this character. This is not an ideal patient. This is a patient with bone edema in the femur and tibia, and with a quite excessive narrowing of the joint space. Using such a new method, you have to be aware which information the patient has to know. It's an innovative procedure without a long time results. That's what every patient is told. We have early clinical experience. This is satisfying, and the MRI follow-up should the early at 12 better than, and I'll show you why, better at 24 months after surgery. We have the revelation program is short. We have full weight bearing. <coughs> as soon as the patient accepts that in, in regards to pain. And it takes four to, uh, to, uh, week one to six, we use ortitis with volatile or virus stress, depending on which com uh, compartment we were treating. We use CPN, we use insoles to do a weight shift to the medial or lateral side, and obviously we use physical therapy. And already in week seven to 12, we begin with athletic specific training for sports, and after three months, uh, normally the patient will be able to return to sports. <coughs> Data from Mr. Davidson, former uh, Florida and our Utah, presented 12, 24, and 36 <coughs> month results. And you see that in means of uh, daily quality of life, and functional scores, and even pain, that patients will <coughs> succeed over this period. <coughs> A rather new presentation from Mr. Spalding showed that activities of daily life and even sports, quality of life, will increase over a period of 24 months. But a big topic about this plug is the plug appearance in MRIs. So what is the MRI telling us and when is it MRI telling us the information we would like to have from this investigation? Obviously, we can check on plug appearance and position. We can follow up the bone edema, and we look for sclerotic bone formation. Plug position. Here you see two plugs um, put next to each other, and you do see a nice uh, small bone, uh, bone bridge between them. This is the ideal increasement, and the angulation follows the angulation of the conformity of the um, femur conduct. Now MRI control after 12 months, and the patient with a single plug. This is a lateral condyle with a single plug, and you do see um, that the plug has still a good visibility within the MRI follow-up. And you will see that it is still a little bit hypo-intensive in the center of the plug, but you also see that <coughs> the bone plane is uh, beginning to close in this 12-month follow-up, and you have a coverage of the defect over the entire defect. 
this was a single plug. And now we see a two plug defect. <coughs> Same appearance. And we do see similar sequences and similar visuality of the plug. But you also see a complete fill-in of the defect. This is one of our controls in the study. The control group is a microfactor group. And in the microfactor group, after 12 months, you see on the right uh, uh, MRI, you still see a bone edema and not sufficient covering of the defect. This is for the persisting osteochondral resistance. And this patient, 12 months after the procedure, you do see a nice covering of the defect. But you have to be aware the signal is not a normal signal. It will present it in, uh, in uh, water sensitive uh, sequences in a hypo intensive signal, and it will last probably with the delayed signal and the fat suppressed, uh, the fat suppressed uh, sequences. Let's talk about pitfalls. This is a patient from a different hospital. And you see that the angulation of the plug is not quite right. And what's very um, interesting is that you see edema around the plug. Don't be worried about the appearance of the plug, but you should be worried about the edema in the bone around the plug. And this you can see even in the coronal sequence. This patient, 65-year-old active golfer, and that's what I was looking at the slides before very intensively. Um, what can you do? It's a kissing lesion, it's a meniscus, an old meniscus tear. So we decided here on two plugs, you see here. We put in two plugs side by side. The other two plugs. But after only 10 weeks, we saw this picture. We saw this osteonecrotic uh, appearance even in the x-rays of the media coma only after 10 weeks. And in the MRI, it even looked worse. And microscopically, it was a disaster. So we put in, we put, uh, and the histology didn't show that a vascular necrosis type morbus are. So we put in a unit, but the bone was as weak that the after another half a year, the uni collapsed and dislocated. And finally, the patient, look at the left slide, you see the degeneration and the progression of the osteoarthritis even in the lateral compartment. So we switched this patient to, uh, uh, to a foot. For Jesus. Having second look at arthroscopies after 12 months, we see that repair tissue seems to originate from the periphery of the blood and migrate to the center. Please don't touch the center of the blood. The center of the blood will now represent, and you see it, this is one of our early patients, we performed microfacturing in the back of the, of the, um, of the uh, effect. But please don't touch the soft tissue because after two years you will see that the surface is firm and does not indent anymore. Mm -hmm. This is after 24 months. So we took a histology because of the cystic plug appearance in MRI. And you can see, if you look in the hole, there is nothing cystic. And if you look at the macroscopic appearance of the plug, in the middle of the pictures, you see that the layers are still there. We see the subcondral bone, we see a tight mark, and we see even cartilage repair cartilage. So, some cases here, a professional soccer player, um, first surgery on lateral meniscectomy, 
pain and swelling in general to 2007. We did symptomatic treatment for a couple of months, and then we performed true fit 11 millimeters and minister trimming in the May of 2007. Full weight bearing immediately, and specific training began at, uh, at August 2007. He went back to the team 1st of September 2007, and here are the controls before he returned to the, to the team. There's a light, slight diffusion in the joint, but you can see that the plug is firmly broader. <coughs> and these are the MRIs, uh, two years, 22 months post-operatively, and still the plug is visible, but it's disappearing by time. Here the pair, 16 months after true fit, he's a forward to our team, and I am team physician of this first, now first team, sort of team, some Pauli member, and this is a nice goal, and he turns on his true fit plug. But is it magic or true fit? At least this single true fit plug has reached first Bundesliga, but in conclusion, I think TrueFit is suitable for focal cartilage and osteochondral lesions. New repair tissue seems to originate at the periphery of the plug and meet migrates to the center. Lesions up to one times three centimeters can be treated. We line up, uh, but we don't put plugs side by side, but we line up up to three plugs in a row. Focus on single lesions is one by one centimeter. We have to be aware that MRI appearance shows increased signals in T2, in T2 mapping for more than two years, and it's different from common use techniques, but represents no failure. 